give you some information from some Bible references to therapeutic grade essential oils. Some Bible references to therapeutic grade essential oils. When we do the reading, when I'm giving you the reading, I'm always, always, always doing it to help us with our healthy mind. Our healthy mind. You hear me say that there are eight things that we must do to be healthy. Well, without even getting into the eight things that we must do, the first thing is to get your mind right to do the other seven. To get your mind right to do the other seven, yeah. And a lot of things are easy to do, but things that are easy to do are also easy not to do. So what I wanna do on the show today is in the space of this of the reading, we're going to give you medicinal grade oils from references from the Bible. And you say, well, why is how does that fit into an affirmation? There is so much that we don't know that we don't know. And the world of medicinal grade essential oils is one of those places of the many, many, many places in the vast universe of the things that we don't even know that we don't know. So by giving you this information, by sharing with you, I hope to open up some of the pathways in your mind and help you get a grasp on the fact that pharmaceuticals and nutraceuticals are not the only things and in many cases are not the things at all that actually bring health and healing and robust vitality to our bodies that we call health. Okay? So, I'm just going to give you a few. Let's start with cedar wood. Now, if you're a Bible reader, you would know that cedar wood is uh, mentioned many times throughout the Bible. Um, I'm actually looking at probably about 12 different passages right here and the first two come from the book of Leviticus come from the book of Leviticus and then there's some in Numbers Samuel so Leviticus 14 and 51 says and he shall take the cedar wood and the hyssop and the scarlet and the living bird and dip them in the blood of the slain bird and in the running water and sprinkle the house seven times. Now this is a, a instruction that's being given of how to purify something, how to sanctify something, the house. 1452 continues to go on and say, Leviticus 1452, and he shall cleanse the house with the blood of the bird and with the running water and with the living bird and with the cedar wood and with the hyssop and the scarlet. So we're really looking at cedar wood here now. So we say, well, what does that have to do with health and healing? Well, one of the things that is really important for us to get is that these oils are intelligent and they have the ability to go exactly to where they need to go uh, for the healing. So what is cedar wood for, good for? Throughout antiquity cedar wood has been used in medicines. The Egyptians or the Chemites used it in embalming the dead. It was also both traditional medicine and incense in Tibet. It combats hair loss alopecia, hello, and it is antibacterial and it is also a lymphatic stimulant. So it's great for hair loss. Arterial sclerosis, that's hardening of the arteries. And we're just talking about cedar wood oil now. ADHD, skin problems like acne and eczema. It stimulates the limbic region of the brain, 
the center of emotions, stimulates the canal, which increases melatonin. Terry Friedman, MD, found in clinical tests that the oil was able to successfully aid in ADD and ADHD, attention deficit disorders, in children. It is recognized for its calming, purifying properties. Now, why am I telling you this? Because here's, a, here's something that is in a book, in the Holy Bible, in the scriptures, that for hundreds, if not thousands of years, has been right under our nose. And we don't know that we don't even know. So rather than put the children on the Ritalin and all of the other things that we're doing to the children, why hasn't anyone recommended Cedarwood? Anyone of authority? Anyone that's running the commercials on TV? Anyone that's trying to get us to uh, get the children well? And maybe the question is, do they want the children well? So I wanted to stimulate your healthy mind today with some information that comes from the scripture. It's absolutely an affirmation. And the affirmation is, I am well. The affirmation is, I can be well. The affirmation is, Mother Earth has in her bounty everything, everything that I need to be well and it comes to me now. Mother Earth has everything in her bounty that I need to be healthy and well and it is coming to me now. Okay, yeah. I just proved it to you. Cedar oil. Cedarwood oil. So, let's continue on with our show today. I want to talk to you about um, your your colon. I'm going to talk to you about cleansing. I'm going to talk to you about whole foods today. So a lot of people are into the cleansing and the detox and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. However, we don't recognize, we don't even know what the colon is for. You know, we know less about our bodies than we do about all this other stuff. We go get all kinds of degrees. We go learn how to do all kinds of technical things and we know nothing about the body. We leave that to others. Well, you have a body. Yeah, no kidding, right? And it's yours to know. You can know your body. The systems, how they operate, is knowable. It's knowable. So why don't we give it any attention? So let me just talk to you about your colon. I got a, a Facebook inquiry and someone's saying, well, I want to do a cleanse. I said, well, what kind of cleanse do you want to do? And uh, you want to do a colon cleanse, you want a liver cleanse, blood cleanse, you want to cleanse your lungs, your lymphatic system. What's the goal? What, are you, what part of your body, what system of your body are you looking to cleanse? Well, most of us never even give that any thought. We just think we just need to go to the bathroom. Well, every part of the body, all of our 11 systems, have to be detoxed. And when we start by cleansing the blood, that helps tremendously. Now, if we, as it relates to the colon, as the blood relates to the colon, when we are cleansing or thinking about going on a cleanse, here's some things that we want to kind of step through in our mind, right? Healthy mind first. What is the objective? How long am I going to cleanse? Okay. What am I going to use to cleanse? And how will I know when I am cleansed? And what is my behavior after that? Okay. Now the, the reason all of that is important is because if you understood the workings of the colon, which I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of insight into now, you would definitely want to have all those questions answered. Well, after the 
stomach, after the food is released from the stomach, after the digestive process, it is pushed out of the pylora valve of the stomach into the intestines, which is a large and small. So as it's pushed out into the intestines, it's, it moves through by what's called the parastaltic action. Now this is a rhythmic action. And so just like your heart beats in a rhythm and your stomach digests in a rhythm, your colon also moves the food through itself in a rhythm. And I'm talking about rhythm because it's vibration. And when the vibration and the rhythm is out of harmony, then you have illness, right? You, have, you don't feel good. You know, if your heart were to miss a beat, you would know that. But when your colon can't push, when that peristaltic muscle can't push the waist through, you also have a problem, okay? Now, as that is happening, along the lining of the colon, now, realize this, the colon is like 22 to 25 feet long, and it's anywhere from three and a half to five inches in diameter around, all tucked right in that midsection. When the food is being passed through there, on the inside of the colon is what's called villi, and they're kind of like little suction cups. And as the food is being pushed through in this rhythm, these little suction cups are drawing the nutrition out of the food. Now this is happening in the intestines. And most of the times we think that the digestive process is where we're getting the nutrition. You're getting the nutrition as the food is passing through your colon. I, I really want you to, to recognize that because we think that the colon is like the um, the the we have you you know the, the flush the toilet, we think it's the pipes that we just push all the waste out. Well, before it gets to the rectum where it's actually done, it's getting ready to come out, it's a whole process where these little suction cups are taking the nutrition from the food while it's traveling through your small and large intestines. Okay. Now, as that's happening, where is that nutrition going? Well, it's going out the lining of the colon on the other side into the bloodstream. Into the bloodstream. So if your colon is toxic, if you have fermented feces, if you have uh, waste matter, okay, if the stuff that you're eating, let's, let's go back there before we even get to what, what the, the, the little suction cups is actually putting into the bloodstream. Let's talk about what it's not putting in the bloodstream. If you are not eating and ingesting whole foods, pesticide free, organic, pesticide free, whole foods, not synthetics, not processed, all of that stuff, the little villi not getting any nutrition. It's getting whatever the preservatives and the artificial colors and all of the, the, the fillers and the poisons that's in the food, in the drink, it's getting all that and putting that into the bloodstream. And when your bloodstream is toxic, it causes every organ, every system in your body to be toxic. Everywhere, because the blood feeds everything. So I wanted to give you that a picture of the colon so you've got where you need to be putting good nutritious food in, right? We want to put the good stuff in, right? The good inside, the good inside. You're going to hear me talking about that a lot because after that 21 day fast, I've gone to, to only uh, whole food nutritionals, no synthetic vitamins, no nutraceuticals, farm to bottle, not lab to bottle, farm to bottle. Those are the nutritions nutritionals that you want to be taking also. So as this is happening, if you don't have those nutritionals and if you don't have whole food, it's just putting 
that poison right into your bloodstream from your colon. Now, as it's continuing to move through, continuing to move through, each part of it, all the way down that whole 25 feet, okay, until it actually moves into the waste production part where it's got everything out of it, it can't do anything else with it, then it starts to come out. Then it starts to come out. So we wonder why colon cancer, just, just think about it. Just think about it. Now that you have that understanding, just think about why colon cancer is uh, so prevalent. Polyps. You know, why they have to remove a part of your colon because you put so much garbage in there, because people have put so much garbage in there, because the food supply is full of so much garbage. And when I'm talking about garbage, I'm talking about the artificial everything. It's either real for real or it's fake. Okay? If it's synthetic, artificial, it's fake. Real food is whole food from Mother Earth. So when you hear me say, I'm Shifa, right? The, uh, the soul of Mother Earth, the natural healing voice of the soul of Mother Earth. Shifa is Arabic and it means the healer. Yes, Shifa. The natural healing voice of the soul of Mother Earth. Because Mother Earth has given us everything. And for whatever the reason is that the cosmic has chosen me to be this voice, that's why I'm here. And the whole foods that we're looking for come from the soil of the earth. So if it's in a box or a bag or wrapped in some plastic, or in other words, if it's processed food, and health food now has become processed food. I'm, I'm here to tell you. You know, there's always, be, be, before it becomes news and everybody knows about it, there's always some voice out there that's, that's saying that we need, to be doing, we need to be going in this direction. But while everybody else is going that way, well, in the early 70s, when I began as, a, as one of the pioneers of this wellness industry that we are experiencing now, this quote-unquote wellness industry, that has been totally industrialized, completely industrialized. In the 70s, it was a small voice of us. And then it grew to, now everybody's going to school to be this or that, and turn, everybody's a healer nowadays. And, and you really are, it lives within you. But you've got to go to school and get certificates for this and certificates for that. And everybody's a healer nowadays. But the in, it has turned into an industry. And when it turns into an industry, it becomes processed. So from the 70s until now, I have watched this thing. When I moved to the southern states, you couldn't even find an organic carrot. Okay, I mean, in between the chicken feet and the pig feet, you know, it, so now you've got, we've got whole foods. Amazing. Amazing. But it's just another grocery store. It's just another supermarket. If you don't know that all that packaged stuff in there is still processed. It's still processed. And if you don't, if you're not aware of, of what the definition is on the food, let me just share with you. And I always talk about ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid is always listed as vitamin C. It's always listed as vitamin C. And vitamin C is more than ascorbic acid. That's an isolate. And so what science does, what they do in the lab, when they make your vitamins and all this stuff that you take every day that you think that's really good for you, that in many times is causing your, uh, your cells to actually die because they can't deal with the isolate. So what science does is they, they find the food that has the, 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 the vitamin in it that's good for the body, and then they find what they think is the active component, and then they, then they extract that part out, and they turn it into an isolate. So vitamin C has more than the molecule of what they call ascorbic acid. 
they left the other eight. Well, you don't have the synergy and your body knows the difference. And when I say synergy, you need the whole molecular structure of the vitamin to match the molecular structure of what the body needs. And from that molecular structure, you have cellular health. And when you have cellular health, you have organ health. And when you have organ health, you have a healthy body. But when you're just putting in bits and pieces, it's crazy. So vitamin B3, niacin, or niacinamide, they make from coal tar, ammonia, and formaldehyde. That's how they make vitamin B3. So you're looking at your vitamins and you've got all this stuff on there um, and you think that, that it's good. And it says, oh, we've got all these vitamins and just got the international units and all that kind of stuff. And you think it's good because the industry has co-opted the wellness movement. And if you don't take control of your life, if you don't take control of your food, your eating, what you ingest, what actually goes into your colon where the little villi can pull it out, and feed your bloodstream, if you don't take ownership of it, then you're still going to go the way of the sickness and disease. I mean, just look around. There's something incongruent about what's happening. We've got zillions and zillions and zillions of bottles of stuff on the shelf. And at the same time, everybody's still sick. There's not any, any increase in health and well-being. Everybody's still taking their vitamins and taking their meds. It's, it's, it's insidious. It really is. So, I want you to understand how the colon works. And that if you continue to put that processed food in, the colon it breaks down. It gets weak. It loses its tone. And so you see people now even young people, their, their belly is all bloated, right? They got all this midsection out here hanging over the, the belt. They call it Dunlap disease, right? Dunlapped over. And it's just, the colon is just so misused. And so when you want to cleanse, you want to cleanse the colon, you want to do it gently. You want to do it gently. You want to do it so that it repairs the colon. And here at Oneness Wellness Lifestyles, we focus on not only the cleansing and the dietary, but how do you restore your organs? How do you bring them back to their, their, their vitality? How do, you, how do you get them to tighten up again? Right? How do you stop the premature aging and the cellular degeneration? Because cleansing alone is not going to do that. Cleansing alone will not do that. And so I started this segment today with the oil. The oil of cedarwood. And I did that specifically, purposefully, because when I come to the end now and I'm talking to you about how to restore, what restoration is, there are medicinals like the medicinal grade essential oils. There are medicinals in herbals. There are new, uh, uh, re restorative properties in certain fruits and vegetables. But if you're not aware of that and you're eating all kinds of stuff, and even if you're eating it from the health food store, doesn't necessarily mean it's healthy. Especially if it's, it came from the, from the lab to the bottle and it came from the processing plant to the uh, to the store. You still need to shop the perimeter of the store. I don't care what store it is. You still need to be shopping the perimeter of the store. So, restorative power is what we want. So, we cleanse, yes. Detox, yes, absolutely. You know, part of the detox is getting the heavy metals out and, and restoring always, always, always. It's about restoring cellular health and nourishing the cells. And when that food is dumped out of the stomach into your intestines and the intestines is trying to get the nutrition out of the food as it's passing through into the waste stage so that it can uh, 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 give your 
blood supply what it needs. It's up to you to have put inside your body the good stuff, the good inside, so that you can live a good, healthy life. So that's my message for today. You listening and watching the Oneness Wellness Lifestyle Show, and I'm your host, Shifa, the natural healing voice of the soul of Mother Earth. <sighs> I had to take a breath after that one because I mean I woke up with that in my spirit. That's what I'm supposed to share with you today. And I sincerely hope that you took some notes or you go back to the website at onenesslifestyles.com, onenesslifestyles.com, and you'll see listen live. You just click on there and you'll see the radio and the TV archives. And this show will be there. So we always want to make it available to you. I'm here on the planet to bring you this, this information. So please use it. Take what you use, uh, what you heard today and put it in use in your life. And this is She Fad, Wonders Wellness Lifestyles, 1-800-609-8157. And I look forward to speaking with you again soon. You be well. Peace.